Welcome on back to the smooth stylings of uh, uh, cool ambient scenes. Hey guys, welcome back to Touch by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender 2.8 once again, taking a look at how to create some cool ambient kind of lighting and scene in this really, really, uh, really neat way. So, I have three lights set up here. I have uh, two area lights. I have one coming down from the top hand side, the top right hand side, which is on uh, 10 energy, and there's uh, this blue color right here. This blue color, and then I have one coming from the left back, um, which is uh, on a, also on 10 energy, and is that pink color right there, pinkish kind of red color. And then from the top, I have a little bit of purple, uh, which is 20 energy, and is this color. So we have three lights, uh, a three-point light set up here, um, and uh, I have a, my camera zoomed in quite a bit. <laughs> the focal distance is is quite long here, 292 uh, millimeters. We're going to go ahead and split our window into two to go over to the shader editor, also known as the node editor. We're going to go ahead and open it up right here, uh, shader. And we're going to go ahead and create a new material for our head that I also got off of, 3dscans.com. I love that website. It, they got a lot of great stuff on there. Go check it out. The link will be down in the description as always. I'm going to go ahead and turn my overlays off so I can see just the scene I want to see. I'm going to go ahead and also uh, go to the world tab here, hit use nodes, and change the color of our background to solid black. Now we have a bit more ambient of a scene already. Uh, with our head, we're going to go ahead and um, create a new object. We're going to create this new object, this new material, sorry. We'll call this material uh, head mat. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> All right, we can hit in to get rid of that tab right there on the side. Um, and what we got to do now is pretty much for the head itself, it's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to add a little bit of metallic. Just a little bit of metallic, um, and turn down that roughness a little bit, um, and that should be good, the way it is, actually. So that's fine the way it is, and then the rest of this is pretty much just nice post-processing stuff. So what I'm going to do is we're going to head over to the, uh, we're going to change from the object shader editor to the world shader editor here. So now we can control all the world nodes and stuff like that. We're going to go ahead and check a couple of things over here on the right-hand side panel in the render tab here. Um, we're going to check... Uh, uh, screen space reflections. So you can see how what that does right there, um, which looks really pretty nice. And we're also going to check volumetric, and we're also going to check uh, the ambient occlusion. Yeah. Other than that, we're good. So uh, for the material, I do want to do one more thing. So let's go back to the material and do the ambient occlusion. Now I forgot about that. We'll go ahead and, and hit Shift A and hit Search, and then we'll do we'll type ambient uh, and just grab that ambient occlusion shader, plop that right there, and plug the AO into the base color. And now you can see the difference. Well, if I turn that off, you can, see, you can see a little bit easier. There's a little bit of a difference there, and you'll be able to tell a lot more later on. We can go ahead and downsize this, and change the distance around, make it a bit more easy to see, um, just things like that. And you can see, there you go. There, that, that, that's that's, that's uh, what I'm looking for right there. All right, so we have that down. I'm going to go back to the World tab now. Uh, actually, we can change the distance on here, too. Um, but uh, but I like doing it over here. It's much easier. So we just put that back on whatever it was. I think it was one, wasn't it? Yeah, one. All right. So we go back to the world tab here, and uh, what we'll do is we'll make sure we have uh, one thing. We only need one thing. Uh, Shift A, and then we're gonna type in volume and grab the volume scatter node and pl place that right beneath the background node and plug this into the volume. Now you can see things got kind of gray. Reason for this is because we got some stuff to do still. So <laughs> we're gonna go ahead, and as you can see, if I go out of my camera, I can't see anything. So I have to go ahead and zoom into our into our head to be able to see anything at all. So now what I have to do is you, we can't see anything in our camera either. Change the density down to 0.2, and we're getting something like this. That's a little that's a little dark still. So we'll go ahead and go 0.1. To see what it looks like. 0.1 looks pretty good. We'll use 0.1, and I'm gonna go ahead and change, go down to my film here. And, uh, no, not film, I'm sorry, uh, color management, and we'll change uh, the view transform from filmic to film. Um, and now this looks pretty cool, right? It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. Uh, you know what? I think we might be able to. No, we can't. We, we'll go ahead and do one anyway. Uh, we don't really need to mess with this too much. We can go ahead and just uh, place it somewhere around the 0. 0.4, maybe 0. 0.2. Yeah, 0. 0.2 looks good, I guess. We'll leave it on 0. 0.2. Um, and then under the volumetric um, section, we don't have to mess with a lot here. We can just um, play around with a couple of these things. You can see, uh, you can see pretty much. We don't really need to do anything with these. We can put this back on 0.5. You can see how this is uh, coming together pretty nicely so far. What I want to do now is we can turn that screen screen space reflections back on there, 
We could add a little bit of bloom there, so we'll go ahead and turn bloom on as well. Um, and we'll turn the threshold down a little bit and the radius up just a little bit. Um, we can also change the color to like a little bit of a lightish blue, something like that, just so it has a little bit of color to it. Yeah, looks good. All right, um, and then the intensity can go up a little bit, just a little bit. There we go. Um, so that was pretty good the way it is right there. And I think that might, let me change this to a little less of a blue, something like... Maybe I, would, maybe I do want to stick with just white. Maybe I do, because maybe it looks like a little bit of a highlight there. All right, that looks good. Um, so, that's pretty much it. What I want to do now is it's still kind of dark. So, what I think we can do is we can go ahead and we can do a couple of different things. We can either go and add in, well, we can change our camera. We can go to our camera tab and then zoom our camera in by double tapping Z. G and then double tapping Z and pushing it in a little bit and then changing our focal length outwards to kind of make it a little bit brighter there so we have a little bit more color which is nice um we could also we this is a more realistic render obviously because we have the the head looking you know not all cartoony but if we go to our object tab and turn the metallic all the way up and then turn the roughness all the way down you can see how we get a really nice cartoon like effect which is pretty pretty really pretty cool um but i'm not going for that today so we're going to go ahead and turn the metallic back down and the roughness back up uh, not too much though, because you see, we start to lose those these edges here that I want. I want to get the edge of his jaw, um, and we have that right there. And then we can turn the talic up a little bit. There we go. So I think that looks pretty cool, and we've we've used uh, quite a bit of these post processing settings over here on the side. You could of course always add some depth of field and some other things here and there, but this is a really pretty um, easy and 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 nice effect that you're getting here with uh with 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 little processing power i mean we can we can zoom on out of this and you can see if i zoom in closer then the lights get bright and you know things get blown up because of the volumetric lighting but if we stay back here where it's supposed to be um you can see how cool this looks it looks like stadium lights really it does um but that's it's it's really cool really fun to do and it looks it just looks so great and so nice we can change these colors around obviously um and we can get uh some 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 nice stuff maybe we want them to be in more green atmosphere maybe we'll do something like a green and a yellow yeah, and then the point light up on top will do like uh, uh, white, maybe. Yeah, sure. Yeah, look at that. So it's not as ambient as the uh, blue and the, the pink and the purple, but there you go. So that is the ambi the cool ambient scene right there. I did this off camera, and I thought I'd do a little tutorial on it because it's pretty cool looking. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. hope you learned something new about mixing all these uh, different things together and, uh, and the, of course, the volumetric lighting is the big thing here without that this is what it looks like yeah so if i turn the bloom off you can see really the difference that it makes look at that yeah that's insane so we have this nice gradient from the side from side to side here um and then uh, of course it makes the head look not as harsh and much much better than it did uh previously so that is going to be it for today's tutorial hope you guys enjoyed it i'll see you guys in the next tutorial but until then bye bye